Laudator Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ. A very warm welcome to you on behalf of Vatican Media, Vatican Radio, and all my colleagues here at the Vatican Dicastery for Communication. I'm Sean Patrick Lovett. It's my privilege to provide the commentary for this live broadcast of the interreligious meeting taking place at the Founders Memorial in Abu Dhabi. On whatever platform, medium, or device you may be following this event, please know we are delighted you could join us. We especially welcome our friends of Catholic TV, Salt and Light TV, Shalom World TV, EWTN TV, and the Catholic Faith Network TV, as well as all of you listening on local radio stations around the world. This broadcast is also available live right now on our Vatican Media audio app and on our Vatican News portal, which you can access at www.vaticannews.va. This interreligious meeting at the Founders Memorial is one of the highlights of Pope Francis' visit to the United Arab Emirates, a visit that began last night when he arrived, but began officially this morning when he was greeted at the Presidential Palace by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Earlier today, Pope Francis met privately with members of the Muslim Council of Elders at the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque. The ad interim director of the Vatican Press Office has just issued a statement saying that that meeting lasted about half an hour and took place in a climate that was particularly cordial and fraternal. Right now, the Holy Father has just arrived at this Founders Memorial, the Founders Memorial being a monument to Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nayan, the first president of the United Arab Emirates, a man who is often known as the Father of the nation. He passed away in 2004 and he was the driving force behind the formation of the United Arab Emirates. فضيلة الإمام الأكبر الأستاذ الدكتور أحمد الطيب شيخ الأزهر الشريف. The meeting is taking place in the center of the sanctuary garden. And if you're watching this on television, you will see a massive monument known as the Constellation. It combines uh, a three-dimensional portrait of Zayed and is designed by the American artist Ralph Helmick. There, if you're receiving images, you will see it right now. This constellation includes suspended shapes consisting of different types of convex polyhedrons. It's illuminated in the evening, like right now, and it's meant to represent, according to the artist, the timelessness of Sheikh Zayed's vision and the guiding light of the United Arab Emirates, indicating the path of progress and prosperity. The welcome words presenting a video presentation of other heads of state and important personages who have visited. The video that the guests are being shown and that we're watching right now includes the visit of heads of state to the United Arab Emirates. باستضافة الزيارة التاريخية المشتركة لكل من قداسة البابا فرانسيس بابا الكريسة الكاثوليكية وفضيلة الإمام الأكبر الدكتور أحمد الطيب شيخ الأزهر الشريف this interreligious meeting is taking place within a broader context, the context of a conference on global fraternal humanity and Pope Francis' invitation to address the interreligious meeting 
is set in this broader uh, conference with some 700 representatives here from all over the world, many of them right here at the Founders Monument at this moment. The guests at this moment continue to be shown a video presentation of the United Arab Emirates and how they have grown and developed in an extraordinarily short time and the pride with which they present themselves as a place of dialogue and encounter. The video itself is presenting one of the highlights of this encounter, which is the signing of a document, a, a document that will confirm the commitment of those present to the concept of human fraternity, world peace, and living together, a, a declaration, a declaration which is directed at the contemporary world. If you're listening or you're watching, you'll hear the, the voice of the, uh, the narrator of this video presenting images and messages of intolerance in the world and therefore the need to come together and to make a universal statement that speaks of the opposite, that speaks of tolerance and acceptance of peace and understanding, that rejects violence and radicalism, and that supports the principles of tolerance, tolerance, fraternity, the support and encouragement that all religions call for. Let this document be a symbol of consolidation, it reads, between East and West, North and South, between each and every person who believes that God created us to get to know one another, to collaborate and to coexist in a harmonious manner as brothers and sisters. Issuing this document, the video reads, took time and effort by both his Holiness Pope Francis and myself, the references to the, the Imam, the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Dr. Ahmad Al-Tayyib, who is present at this encounter today. It's an expression of the efforts of the United Arab Emirates in spreading a culture of tolerance and peace, so reads the video, we who believe in God and in the final meeting with him and his judgment on the basis of our religious and moral responsibility. And through this document, call upon ourselves, upon the leaders of the world, as well as the architects of international politics policy and world economy to work strenuously to spread the culture of tolerance and living together in peace. To intervene at the earliest opportunity to stop the shedding of innocent blood and to bring an end to wars, conflicts, environmental decay, and the moral and cultural decline that the world is presently enduring. Through faith in God, who has created the universe, creatures, and all human beings, equal on account of His mercy, believers are called to express this human fraternity by safeguarding creation and the entire universe and supporting all persons, especially the poorest and those most in need.
This declaration may constitute an invitation to reconciliation and fraternity among all believers, indeed among believers and non-believers, and among all people of goodwill. This declaration may be a witness to the greatness of faith in God that unites divided hearts and elevates the human soul. With my brother, the Grand Imam, this is the voice of Pope Francis, we wondered where we can proclaim this declaration. Our choice was Abu Dhabi, capital of the United Arab Emirates. In order to encourage this excellent model of human fraternity, and the promotion of inter-religious tolerance at this very moment when millions of people in the world are suffering injustice, oppression and persecution. The voice of Pope Francis continues in the documentary. We hope that our declaration may be the beginning of a universal peace that prevails in the world and embraces all human beings. And the logo now of the Human Fraternity Meeting, which is taking place in Abu Dhabi right now. The presenter now introduces the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates uh, to deliver the opening words of welcome here at this meeting, this interreligious meeting in Abu Dhabi. He is His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE. On behalf of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the UAE, it is my great honor to welcome His Holiness Pope Francis, Pope of the Catholic Church, and His Eminence Dr. Ahmad Al Tayyip, Grand Imam of Al Azhar, to the United Arab Emirates, a country of peaceful coexistence, tolerance, and diversity. This historic moment emphasizes above all the importance of cultivating respectful dialogue. And today we are celebrating together the signing of the Human Fraternity Document. We are honored here in the UAE to be the country where the signing is taking place. He refers to all those who helped made this encounter possible. And then greets Pope Francis in particular and the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Ahmad Al-Tayyab. We thank them, he says, for the efforts made of His Holiness Pope Francis and Dr. Ahmad Al-Tayyab we who are responsible for this country, we commit ourselves to taking the concept of human fraternity forward. This is a pledge that we continue to support, including all the efforts being made to make this region more peaceful. Our pledge is one of fraternity, tolerance and dialogue, may peace and blessings be with us all. 
The voice you hear heard is that of the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. أدعو فضيلة الإمام الأكبر الأستاذ الدكتور أحمد الطيب شيخ الأزهر الشريف لإلقاء كلمته فليتفضل مشكورا. And the presenter calls to the podium now the Grand Imam of Al Azhar, His Eminence Dr. Ahmad at Tayeb. The Imam and Pope Francis have met five times, most recently last October in the Casa Santa Marta, right in the Vatican. It was the Imam who greeted Pope Francis during his apostolic visit to Egypt in 2017. The Imam dresses Pope Francis as friend and brother and head of the Catholic Church. He addresses Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed and all those who are all the authorities here of the United Arab Emirates and those present, peace upon you all. He begins by thanking the United Arab Emirates, both the authorities and the people for the hospitality shown and for hosting this historic meeting that brings together heads of different churches and religions. The Imam speaks about a new kind of culture, a counterculture to violence and bloodshed. We are asking the whole world, he said, to stop bloodshed and the death of innocent people, to, to bring a halt to senseless wars and conflicts that have caused our cultures to go back rather than forward and brought us to a situation where we risk the outbreak of a third world war. This is the generation of wars with all the fear that that word war brings with it. I still remember what people said after the end of the Second World War how they spoke of the atrocities and the devastation that it had wrought. I was 10 years old when, in 1956, I experienced war in Egypt. And my, my own city was bombed, the city of Luxor. I remember the darkness of those sleepless nights when we had to flee and hide underground until the morning. We still remember these things in my country, even if 60 years have gone by. We remember the pain. Another war, 1967, which was even worse than the previous one, which we lived in all its atrocities and drama. And six years passed with us living the so-called war economy. It was only after 1973 when we were able to emerge and to experience the suppression of the aggressors 
It was after the end of these conflicts that we began a new period of peace and prosperity. And yet now there is a new phase that began in the 1990s, the age of terrorism, which has got worse with time. Now this threat is felt throughout the world, east and west, and with the arrival of the third millennium that we so hope would be the end of death, atrocities and violence. Instead, we've been taken by surprise in the most negative sense with the events of September the 11th, right at the beginning of this new millennium. The Muslim world too paid a price for this attack, which was instrumentalized in a negative way by the world. This event of September the 11th. The Muslim world has been branded as a bloodthirsty world this propaganda this negative propaganda has brought about feelings of hatred and towards the muslim world fear terror these are what are now associated with islam the document the signing of which, and the launching of which we're celebrating today, is a document that was born from encounters with my dear brother, Pope Francis. This document was and is encouraged by both the Holy Father and myself. The document is meant to be a response to all those who are suffering, those who have to flee their countries because of war and conflict. We asked ourselves, what can religions, what can the monotheistic religions do to assist these people, to assist them in their, in their suffering, in their, their drama? Both the Pope and myself, we agreed together, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to to answer, to respond to the situation. My brother, the Pope, feels the pain of everyone without distinction. Most importantly, religions, all religions, are innocent of the accusations of terrorism that are sometimes attributed to them. They have nothing to do with theology. Terrorists are murderers. They are people who commit a violence against God, whether in East or West. We have a responsibility to confront them to stop them and to defend places of worship, to defend our people against the crimes of these terrorists. We agreed also that religions must stand up to these acts of violence. All the messages of God confirm this, beginning with the Ten Commandments. Do not kill, thou shalt not kill. Jesus too spoke from another 
mountain in Palestine of this in his Sermon on the Mount, which is a moral a point of moral convergence. We're listening to the voice of the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar. He has just quoted Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and now he speaks of the, the Prophet Muhammad, one, his last speech on Arafat. Muhammad too speaks of the need to protect life, the lives of others. We are responsible for the lives of others because others are, we are all God's creation. Dr. Ahmed at Tayeb, the Grand Imam of Al Azhar, goes ahead quoting other sources in the monotheistic religions, all of which speak about the importance of human life and that we have a responsibility. Religions in particular have a combined responsibility to protect life because God is the source of all life. من أن الأديان هي بريد الحروب وسببها الرئيسي وأن التاريخ شاهد على دكتور أحمد التيب repeats again it's important to stress religions are not the source of violence and war history proves this عن التدخل في شؤون المجتمعات بعدما صارت هذه الفرية سريان النار في الهشيم في وعي الناس والشباب وبخاصة في الغرب وكانت من وراء انتشار دعوات الإلحاد والفلسفات المادية ومذاهب الفوضى والعدمية والحرية بلا سقف وإحلال العلم. He speaks also of the challenge of atheism and nihilism in the world. Those who think that we can substitute religion with intellectualism, we can revolt, we can rebel against God and his prophets. Any attempt to rebel against God, he says, only brings disastrous results. We see this in different parts of the world today. The first cause of crisis in the world today is the lack of religious morality, disbelief in God, philosophies that place the human person that substitute God with the human individual. أما الحروب التي انطلقت باسم الأديان وقتلت الناس تحت لافتاتها فإن الأديان لا تسأل عنها وإن wars that are caused or provoked so called in the name of God are never the fruit of religion they are the fruit of religious choices it's not religious choices but political choices that use religious figures that instrumentalize religion for their political purposes.
لا تسمح أبدا لهؤلاء الضالين المضلين بالانتساب الصحيح إلى أي دين إلهي ولا تبرر لهم خيانة أمانتهم في تبليغه للناس كما أنزله الله People who use religion for political purposes are misusing and abusing religion. Often religious texts themselves are misinterpreted or misused or instrumentalized by politicians for their purposes. These texts are used to justify conflicts and wars against others. And then there's the hypocrisy of politicians who abuse the texts to justify their laws and then ask forgiveness from the widows and orphans who are left behind as a result of these conflicts. We invite politicians not to use or anyone not to use the name of God to justify violence and terrorism. God did not create us for violence and suffering. I am convinced that these efforts to build fraternity, human fraternity, unnecessary. In Egypt, a few days ago, we inaugurated one beside the other a mosque and a church. This is marks an historic moment which demonstrates the closeness of our religions. وتبقى لي كلمة أوجهها لإخوة المسلمين في الشرق وهي أن تستمروا في احتضار I would like to address my fellow Muslims in the East. My message to you is embrace your Christian brothers and sisters. They are companions in the state. They are close to us. There are special bonds between us. Even the Quran speaks of these bonds. The Quran speaks of priests and brothers. Christians are filled with mercy. God himself placed mercy in their hearts and this is what the Quran tells us. Compassion and mercy are part of Jesus Christ's message. Christianity has extended a hand to Islam, defending Islam from atheism. Muhammad invited his followers to go to Ethiopia because he said there was a king Christian king who was just and kind and defended his Muslim brothers from the pagans. And I would like to speak to my Christian brothers and sisters
I'd rather you didn't use the term minority. You're not a minority. You are citizens in every sense. Let's put aside that term, minority. You are citizens with full rights, and our bond represents the rock against which all plots that try to divide us will break. And to you, Muslim citizens in the West, the Imam invites them to integrate themselves into the communities while maintaining their identity, respecting the laws of the countries where they are guests. Respect the security of these countries in which you find yourselves. You have a religious duty to do so. If you have any problems regarding your religion in the countries you find yourselves, you need to, to speak to your religious leaders and resolve them that way. The Imam then speaks directly to young people and invites them to live an awareness of their identity and their morality. You need to hold on to your principles, he says, and look to a future without violence. The document that we're signing here today, show it to your children, teach it to your children. It's an extension of Muhammad's teaching in Medina, of the teaching of Jesus. It's a series of principles. We have the duty, he says, as religious leaders, to defend our societies. And the Imam refers to the interreligious meeting and that took place here in Abu Dhabi uh, defending uh, children, protecting children and uh, minors online. Again, the Grand Imam of Al-Hazar refers to the document on human fraternity and says he hopes that this document will serve as the basis, as a stimulus for a world peace and new way of living together. He thanks all those who helped make this encounter possible. The Grand Imam of al -Azhar is listing the people, he's, he's thanking various people for making this meeting possible, including the private secretary of Pope Francis. If you've just joined us, then please know that we are here watching and following the interreligious meeting taking place at the Founders Memorial in Abu Dhabi. It's the first full day of Pope Francis' visit to the United Arab Emirates. Extremely historic because it's the first visit of any Pope to the Arab Peninsula.
قداسة البابا فرانسيس باب الكنيسة الكاثوليكية لإلقاء كلمته فليتفضل مشكورا The speaker, the MC, now invites Pope Francis to the podium to deliver his address, an address which is given in the presence of the major civil authorities of all the United Arab Emirates and the diplomatic corps. The Holy Father gives the traditional greeting, Peace be with you. The Holy Father begins by thanking His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan and Dr. Ahmad Al Tayyib, the Grand Imam of Al Azhar for their words, which we heard just a few moments ago. I am grateful to the Council of Elders, he says, for the meeting we've just had at the Grand Mosque of Sheikh Zayed. And he greets the civil and religious authorities and the diplomatic corps. Uh, also the President of Egypt and those who are present. Allow me to thank you sincerely, he says. Thank you for the warm welcome that you've all given me and our delegation. I thank all those who've contributed to making this journey possible and who've worked with dedication, enthusiasm and professionalism towards this event. The organizers, those in the protocol office, the security personnel, all who've made their contribution in various ways behind the scenes. A special word of thanks also to Mr. Mohammed Abdel Salam, former advisor to the Grand Imam. From your country, my thoughts turn to all the countries of this peninsula. To them I address my most cordial greetings with friendship and esteem. With a heart grateful to the Lord, in this eighth centenary of the meeting between St. Francis of Assisi and Sultan al-Malik al-Kamil, I've welcomed the opportunity to come here as a believer thirsting for peace, as a brother seeking peace with the brethren. We are here, says Pope Francis, to desire peace, to promote peace, to be instruments of peace. The logo of this journey depicts a dove with an olive branch. It's an image that recalls the story present in different religious traditions of the primordial flood. According to the biblical account, in order to preserve humanity from destruction, God asked Noah to enter the ark along with his family. Today, we too, in the name of God, in order to safeguard peace, need to enter together as one family into an ark which can sail the stormy seas of the world, the ark of fraternity. The point of departure is the recognition that God is at the origin of the one human family. He, who is the creator of all things and all persons, wants us to live as brothers and sisters, dwelling in the common home of creation which he has given us. Fraternity is established here at the roots of our common humanity as a vocation contained in God's plan of creation. This tells us that all persons have equal dignity and that no one can be a master or slave of others. We cannot honor the Creator without cherishing the sacredness of every person and of every human life. Each person is equally precious in the eyes of God. 
who does not look upon the human family with a preferential gaze that excludes, but with a benevolent gaze that includes. Thus, to recognize the same rights for every human being is to glorify the name of God on earth. In the name of God the Creator, therefore, every form of violence must be condemned without hesitation, because we gravely profane God's name when we use it to justify hatred and violence against a brother or sister. No violence can be justified in the name of religion. The enemy of fraternity is an individualism which translates into the desire to affirm oneself and one's own group above others. This danger threatens all aspects of life, even the highest innate prerogative of man, that is, the openness to the transcendent and to religious piety. True religious piety consists in loving God with all one's heart and one's neighbor as oneself. Religious behavior needs continually to be purified from the recurrent temptation to judge others as enemies and adversaries. Each belief system is called to overcome the divide between friends and enemies in order to take up the perspective of heaven, which embraces persons without privilege or discrimination. I wish to express appreciation, says Pope Francis, for the commitment of this nation to tolerating and guaranteeing freedom of worship, to confronting extremism and hatred, even as the fundamental freedom to profess one's own beliefs is promoted this freedom being an intrinsic requirement for a human being's self-realization, we need to be vigilant lest religion be instrumentalized and deny itself by allowing violence and terrorism. Fraternity certainly also embraces variety and differences between brothers and sisters, even though they are linked by birth and are of the same nature and dignity. Religious plurality is an expression of this. In such a context, the right attitude is neither a forced uniformity nor a conciliatory syncretism. What we are called to do as believers is commit ourselves to the equal dignity of all in the name of the Merciful One who created us and in whose name the reconciliation of conflicts and fraternity and diversity must be sought. Here I want to reaffirm, says the Pope, the conviction of the Catholic Church. We cannot truly call on God, the Father of all, if we refuse to treat in a brotherly way any person created as they are in the image of God. Various questions confront us. How do we look after each other in the one human family? How do we nourish a fraternity which is not theoretical but translates into authentic fraternity? How can the inclusion of the other prevail over exclusion in the name of belonging to one's own group? How, in short, can religions be channels of fraternity rather than barriers of separation? The human family and the courage of otherness. The Pope continues, If we believe in the existence of the human family, it follows that it must, as such, be looked after. As in every family, this happens above all through a daily and effective dialogue. 
This presupposes having one's own identity not to be foregone to please the other person. But at the same time, it demands the courage of otherness, which involves the full recognition of the other and his or her freedom, and the consequent commitment to exert myself so that the other person's fundamental rights are always affirmed everywhere and by everyone. Without freedom, we are no longer children of the human family, but slaves. As part of such freedom, I would like to emphasize religious freedom. Religious freedom is not limited only to freedom of worship, but sees in the other truly a brother or sister, a child of my own humanity, whom God leaves free and whom therefore no human institution can coerce, not even in God's name. Pluralism are a sign of the wisdom with which God created humanity. This divine witness, this divine wisdom is at the source of our freedom to be different. Dialogue and prayer. The Pope returns to the courage of otherness. He says, this is at the heart of dialogue, which is based on sincerity of intentions. Dialogue, says the Pope, is indeed compromised by pretense, which increases distance and suspicion. We cannot proclaim fraternity and then act in the opposite way, he says. We are following the Holy Father's discourse here in Abu Dhabi at the interreligious meeting, the interreligious meeting in the presence of the highest authorities of the United Arab Emirates and the diplomatic corps. We heard the presentation of His Eminence Dr. Ahmad at Tayeb, the Grand Imam of Al. Azhar, and the welcome speech delivered by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The connection with uh, Abu Dhabi has been temporarily interrupted and so we're presuming that the Holy Father is continuing with his discourse but we're unable at this time to provide a simultaneous translation for you. We will pick up and summarize what he says as soon as the connection is re-established. Meanwhile I can give you a summary of the speech given by the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates on the arrival of the Holy Father at the Founders Memorial. He spoke specifically of the celebration, as he called it, of the signing of a document, the Human Fraternity Document. We are presuming that this document will be signed after the ceremony here at the Founders Memorial today. This is an historic moment, the uh, Prime Minister of the UAE said, and 
moment which emphasizes the importance of cultivating respectful dialogue and understanding among followers not just of the two faiths represented here today, but among all people of all faiths. In fact, this is an interreligious meeting. The United Arab Emirates says the Prime Minister is delighted to serve as the foundation and platform of this remarkable event. He also announced the launch of the Human Fraternity Award. The purpose of this award, he said, is to honor those who work tirelessly and sincerely to bring people together. And this inaugural award is being bestowed today on both His Holiness Pope Francis and on Dr. Ahmad at tayeb for their distinguished and determined efforts to foster peace between people throughout the world. One of the purposes of the document uh, on human fraternity that has been agreed upon and will be signed at the end of this celebration. We listened to the words of Dr. Ahmed at tayeb the Grand Imam of Al-Hazar, who gave the welcome speech to Pope Francis, addressing his fellow Muslims both in the East and West and calling upon them to integrate themselves into the countries in which they find themselves, being respectful and following the principles of Islam, but at the same time being respectful of and honoring the codes and laws of the nations in which they find themselves. An interesting point for us was when he called upon Christians living in Muslim countries not to consider themselves a minority. He said it would be best not even to use this word minority as Christians should truly consider themselves also fully integrated and fully citizens of these countries in which they find themselves. Dr. Ahmed at tayeb has met with Pope Francis on various occasions. They met for the first time in 2016 and most recently last October when the Grand Imam of Al-Hazar visited Pope Francis here in the Vatican at the Casa Santa Marta. It was he who welcomed Pope Francis during his apostolic visit to Egypt in 2017 when the Holy Father went to Egypt to attend the International Peace Conference organized by Al-Hazar. You're listening to Vatican Media and Vatican Radio's live broadcast of this interreligious meeting taking place in Abu Dhabi. We're waiting for the connection to return. Every human being has a right. No one, therefore, can believe in God and not seek to live in justice with everyone, according to the golden rule. This sounds like so the wish, the voice the of the you, translator, so to them. the translator the of what the Holy Father is saying. We we can't hear the Holy Father's voice, but we can hear the translator's voice. The Holy Father is speaking about peace and justice. Peace and justice, these are the themes that the Holy Father is referring to in his speech right now. No one, no one, says the Pope, can believe in God and not seek to live in justice with everyone according to the golden rule. Whatever you wish that men would do to you, so do to them. This is the law and the prophets. Peace and justice, he says, are inseparable. The prophet Isaiah says, the effect of righteousness will be peace. Peace dies when it's divorced from justice, but justice is false if it's not universal. Peace 
il deserto che fiorisce. Religion, said the Pope, should be the voice of the least. They should keep watch as sentinels of fraternity in the night of conflict. They should be vigilant warnings to humanity not to close our eyes in the face of injustice and never to resign ourselves to the many tragedies in the world. The Pope uses the image now of the desert that flourishes. Having spoken of fraternity as an ark of peace, he says, I now want to take inspiration from the second image, that of the desert which surrounds us. Here in just a few years, with far-sightedness and wisdom, the desert has been transformed into a prosperous and hospitable place. From being an unapproachable and inaccessible obstacle, the desert has become a meeting place between cultures and religions. Here the desert has flourished, not just for a few days in the year, but for many years to come. This country in which sand and skyscrapers meet continues to be an important crossroads between the west and the east, between the north and the south of the planet. A place of development where once inhospitable spaces supply jobs for people of various nations. Nonetheless, as the Pope, development too has its adversaries. If the enemy of fraternity is the individualism referred to, I want to point to indifference, says Pope Francis, as an obstacle to development. An indifference which ends up converting flourishing realities into desert lands. In fact, a purely utilitarian development cannot provide real and lasting progress. Only an integral and cohesive development provides a future worthy of the human person. Indifference prevents us from seeing the human community beyond its earnings and our brothers and sisters beyond the work they do. Indifference doesn't look to the future. It doesn't care about the future of creation. It doesn't care about the dignity of the stranger and the future of children. In this context, says the Pope, I'm delighted to hear in Abu Dhabi last November the first forum of the Interreligious Alliance for Safer Communities took place whose theme was child dignity in the digital world. This event recalled a message issued a year before in Rome during an international congress on the same theme, a congress to which I had given my complete support and encouragement. I thank, therefore, all the leaders who were engaged in this field and I assure them of my support, solidarity and participation and that of the Catholic Church in this very important cause of the protection of minors in all its forms. Here in the desert, continues Pope Francis, a way of fruitful development has been opened which beginning from the creation of jobs offers hope to many persons from a variety of nations, cultures and beliefs. Among them many Christians too, whose presence in the region dates back centuries, have found opportunities and made a significant contribution to the growth and well-being of the country. In addition to professional skills, they bring you the genuineness of their faith. The respect and tolerance they encounter, as well as the necessary places of worship where they pray, allow them a spiritual maturity which then benefits society as a whole. I encourage you to continue on this path, says the Pope, so that those who either live here or are passing through may preserve not only the image of the great works erected in the desert, but also the image of a nation that includes and embraces all. It is with this spirit that I look forward to concrete opportunities for meeting, not only here, but in the entire beloved region, a focal point of the Middle East. I look forward to societies where people of different faiths have the same right of citizenship and where only in the case of violence in any of its forms 
Is that right removed? A fraternal living together, founded on education and justice, a human development built upon a welcoming inclusion and on the rights of all. These are the seeds of peace, which the world's religions are called to help flourish. For them, perhaps as never before, in this delicate historical situation, it is a task that can no longer be postponed to contributing actively to demilitarizing the human heart. The arms race, the extension of its zones of influence, the aggressive policies to the detriment of others will never bring stability. War, says Pope Francis, cannot create anything but misery. Weapons bring nothing but death. Humani human fraternity, he says, requires us as representatives of the world's religions the duty to reject every nuance of approval for the word war. Let us return it to its miserable crudeness. Its fateful consequences are before our eyes, and the Pope says he is thinking in particular of Yemen, Syria, Iraq, and Libya. Together, as brothers and sisters in the one human family willed by God, let us commit ourselves against the logic of armed power, against the monetization of relations, the arming of borders, the raising of walls, the gagging of the poor. Let us oppose all this with the sweet power of prayer and daily commitment to dialogue. Our being together today is a message of trust and encouragement to all people of goodwill so that they may not surrender to the floods of violence and the desertification of altruism. God, concludes Pope Francis, is with those who seek peace. From heaven he blesses every step which on this path is accomplished on earth. Once again, we have lost the connection with Abu Dhabi, which is why you're not hearing the Pope's voice. But that was the conclusion of his discourse, the conclusion of his address here at the Founders Memorial in Abu Dhabi. At, as part of the inter-religious meeting organized to launch both the document on human fraternity uh, for world peace and living together and the human fraternity award the first of which is being bestowed on pope francis himself and on dr ahmed at tayeb the Grand Imam of Al-Hazar, both of them for their distinguished and determined efforts to foster peace among people throughout the world. You are listening to Vatican Radio. This is a Vatican media broadcast coming to you from Abu Dhabi. The Holy Father has just concluded his address here at the Inter religious meeting, a meeting that heard the address from the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and the Grand Imam of Al Hazar. At this very moment, at the conclusion of these addresses, there is the solemn signing of this document, the document on human fraternity and world peace and living together. The signatories being the Pope Francis and the Grand Imam. This is a document that was born from encounters between the Holy Father and the Imam, who've had serious various meetings together and as the Imam said in his speech in his discourse to the gathering 
was born of their common acknowledgement of the role religions are called upon to play as sources of inspiration and peace and fraternity in the world. We're watching the, the signing of this document taking place here at the Founders Memorial in Abu Dhabi beneath this massive structure, this sculpture known as the Constellation, representing the father of the nation, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nayyan, the first president of the United Arab Emirates, the man who is credited with bringing together the different nations and, and creating the reality of the UAE. This document on human fraternity, uh, I could read the introduction to you. It says, faith leads a believer to see in the other a brother or sister to be supported and loved through faith in God, who has created the universe, creatures, and all human beings, equal on account of His mercy, believers are called to express this human fraternity by safeguarding creation and the entire universe and supporting all persons, especially the poorest and those most in need. If you hear these words, these are the words of the introduction of the document, which is being signed at this very moment at the inter-religious meeting in Abu Dhabi. They sound very familiar. They are words that you've heard Pope Francis speak very often. And by signing this, this joint signing by the Grand Imam and the Holy Father, they are words and sentiments that are shared. This is a commitment on behalf of the Muslim world and the, the Christian world to these principles, the transcendental value as the starting point of a fraternal and friendly atmosphere where the document reads, we share joys, sorrows and problems of our contemporary world. The document speaks about how it came about as a result of these encounters between the Imam and the Pope. We considered, it says, the scientific and technical progress made, the digital era of mass media communications. We reflected on the level of poverty, conflict, and suffering of so many of our brothers and sisters in different parts of the world as a consequence of the arms race, social injustice, corruption, inequality, moral decline, terrorism, discrimination, extremism, and many other causes. These are themes that were touched upon in the discourse of the Grand Imam and the Holy Father himself. In the images we're, we're seeing coming from Abu Dhabi, this document has just been signed by the Pope and by the Imam, and they are now signing a document together with the Crown Prince. With the Crown Prince of the United Arab Emirates, who is greeting Pope Francis at this moment. He is Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayyan. The rest of the introduction to the document that's just been signed says from our fraternal and open discussions and from the meetings that expressed profound hope in a bright future for all human beings, the idea of this document on human fraternity was conceived. It's a text that's been given honest and serious thought so as to be a joint declaration of good and heartfelt aspirations. It's a document that invites all persons who have faith in God and faith in human fraternity to unite and work together so that it may serve as a guide for future generations to advance a culture of mutual respect in the awareness of the great divine grace that makes all human beings brothers and sisters. That's from the introduction to the document on human fraternity for world peace and living together, which has just been signed in Abu Dhabi by Pope Francis and the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Ahmad at Tayyip. And that concludes this live broadcast coming to you from Abu Dhabi, our next 
commentary in English will be of the Holy Father's Mass at St. Joseph's Cathedral in Abu Dhabi starting at 7.30 a.m. Rome time tomorrow. Do remember that this event, like other papal events, is available on our Vatican YouTube channel and our Vatican News portal where you can find summaries of the Holy Father's discourses, including the one you've just heard, as well as reports on all his activities, including from our correspondence with the Pope in Abu Dhabi right now. Be sure to interact with us on social media. Our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts are updated constantly, and you'll find us at vaticannews.va. Until next time, on behalf of Vatican Media and Vatican Radio, I'm Sean Patrick Lovett, wishing you all every blessing. Laudato Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ.